Hello everyone, I hope everyone is having a great Saturday and uh, I hope you enjoyed uh, yesterday's stream. Uh, those of you who haven't uh, and don't know who the winners of the giveaway are, I will put a list uh, of the winners in the description below so you can see who won uh, the Amazon gift cards and uh, the championship chess set. Uh, about this game, well, uh, the World Junior Championship came to an end and in the end... Uh, <laughs> Uh, Norway now has two world champions, uh, Magnus Carlsen as the official world champion in classical chess uh, and Ari Antari, uh, the junior world champion. And uh, those of you who were hoping uh, Pragnananda will win, win, win the entire event, uh, well, uh, this time young Prago didn't break any, nor didn't break any records, uh, but he did uh, get his first Grandmaster Norm and uh, with, with half a point uh, behind Tari, uh, in the end, he finished in fourth place, but uh, he played a he played a spectacular tournament, and uh, I'm sure I'm sure he still has uh, pl plenty to go for. Uh, but this game uh, it was played in round eight. Uh, Ariantari has the black pieces against uh, Grigory Oparin, and uh, Oparin is a very strong Russian grandmaster. Uh, he's rated above 2600. Uh, I think it's uh, 2606. So, Tari has the black pieces against a higher rated opponent, definitely a difficult task for any, any chess player. And uh, Tari is actually the 12th uh, Grandmaster Norway has produced, uh, and uh, he's actually the third youngest uh, player ever to win the Norway Championship. Tari won the Norway Championship in 2015, uh, younger than him were Simon Agdestein and Magnus Carlsen who won it uh, at the age of 15, uh, Tari was 16 at the time. Uh, so let's see this game, and for those of you who play uh, play the Karo Khan, uh, this will be quite a treat. Uh, we have e4 by Oparin and c6 by Tari. d4, d5, and e5 now, the advanced variation of the Karo Khan. And here you have uh, two types of players. Uh, those that will play c5 here and go in some sort of French variation being a tempo down, and those like Tari who will play bishop to f5, who are not afraid of the bayonets. Uh, as that is exactly what Operin goes for. He plays g4, the, ba the bayonet variation uh, of the Karo Khan defense. Bishop to g6 and the immediate e6 now. Uh, queen to d6 by Tari. Oh, black, can, black can even capture, f captures on e6 and after something like h4, uh, knight to d7, h5, bishop to f7 and f4. It's uh, both playable for white and for black. It's, uh, you know, simply a matter of uh, pers personal choice. So after e6, queen to d6 by Tari, uh, e captures on f7, bishop captures on f7, and f4. Uh, knight to f6, uh, knight to c3, knight bd7, and uh, bishop to h3. And here, uh, Tari has a lot of options here. Uh, he can go something like e6, he can go queen to e6 with check, maybe with ideas of exchanging queens if Oprah would block with queen e2. Uh, he can go for h6 to maybe block g5 this way. Uh, but uh, Tari goes for the immediate g5. Uh, we have f captures on g5 and now knight to e4. Uh, and here Oparin plays knight g to e2. Uh, maybe maybe a better move would have been to capture this knight. Captures, captures. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's, not, it's not at all clear. Uh, but Oparin went for knight g to e2. Uh, we have bishop to g7. Uh, castles, castles by both sides. And uh, bishop to e3. Uh, knight to b6 now, uh, going for that c4 square, uh, bishop to f4 with a tempo on the queen, now knight captures on c3, and uh, b captures on c3. Uh, opening can't capture the queen, but bishop captures on d6, uh, because after the following line, knight captures on d1, now bishop captures on e7, uh, rook, uh, rook to e8, uh, rook captures knight on d1, and rook captures bishop on e7, and after something like knight to g3, uh, Operin would be down a piece. So this definitely isn't in white's favor, so after knight captures on c3, b captures on c3 was played, and now e5, a beautiful central uh, thrust. Uh, bishop to g3, and now knight to c4. The knight is finally on c4, and that is, there is no piece that can uh, get him away from there. Uh, rook to f5, and here we have bishop to g6. Probably something Operin was expecting, uh, but he thought uh, things would things would uh, go differently. Uh, queen to d3 now. Uh, the problem with uh, rook captures on f8 with check, uh, this is, you know, you're getting rid of this problem of bishop is attacking rook, uh, but after rook captures and rook captures, after something like bishop to g2, uh, queen to e7, 
uh, attacking the g5 pawn, queen c1 probably defending, and after e captures, knight captures, uh, bishop captures, and c captures, uh, the queen uh, comes to e2, and this is a much better position for black, you're attacking g4 here, uh, white, will, white will struggle immensely uh, to defend this, the bishop is attacking c2, uh, and the white, white doesn't really have anything here. Uh, so after this bishop to g6, queen to d3 was played. Uh, Operin is kind of hoping that this bishop captures rook and then he can undouble and create this uh, powerful f and g pawn. Uh, but queen to e7, uh, attacking the g5 pawn. Uh, we have d captures on e5, knight captures on e5, and now queen to e3. And uh, the, uh, Operin's idea is after bishop captures rook, uh, g captures uh, bishop on f5, he will have this threat of pushing the pawn to f6. Uh, but he missed uh, Tari's idea. Tari plays bishop captures rook on f5, g captures on f5, and now uh, f6 is coming. And he's, well, I don't think he missed this, I just think there was no way around this. He thought if queen captures on g5, then bishop captures knight on e5 or something. Uh, but he missed uh, this idea, queen captures on g5, and uh, this is perfectly fine. This is the only move actually that works for black, N no other move uh, gives black the advantage. And the problem is you can't capture, if you capture the queen, a knight f3 check, uh, forking the king and the queen, and after king g2, knight captures queen, uh, you're down the exchange and uh, you're losing this game as white. So after queen captures on g5, uh, Oparin tried knight to f4, uh, rook a to e8, we have queen to e2 now, uh, Operin has to find any means not to exchange queens or he can simply resign the game. Uh, knight to g6, now uh, opening up a discovered attack on the queen. Uh, knight to e6, okay you are forking the rook and the queen but it doesn't really matter because knight to f4 now. Uh, the bishop can't capture the knight because it's pinned, the knight can't capture because uh, you lose the queen. And uh, what do you play here? If you capture the queen with knight g5, then knight captures on h3 with check first, knight captures and rook captures on e2. Uh, again, you're down the exchange and uh, you can't play this as white against the grandmaster. Uh, so after knight f4, queen g4 uh, was an attempt. And after knight captures on h3, uh, queen captures on h3 and queen captures on f5. Uh, in this position, uh, Oparin resigned the game. As uh, the knight is attacked on e6, the queen is attacked on h3, so white has no other option but to capture the queen, and after and after you exchange queens, uh, rook captures, uh, you have to move the knight, something knight e4, simply bishop captures, d captures, and uh, again, you're up the exchange and you're up a pawn, this is completely winning for black, uh, Oparin does not want to play this game anymore. So yeah, uh, this is a, a game from round 8, I think uh, Tari drew uh, uh, all of his games until the end in round 9, uh, 10 and 11. Uh, so, you know, de definitely an, impress an impressive performance uh, with, uh, uh, with 8.5 points, uh, very nice. So yeah, uh, congratulations to Ari and Tari, now Norway has two world champions, uh, you know, quite, quite a country. Uh, I don't know if they still have the, the strongest man in the world, uh, I, I think he lost the title uh, one year ago, but he, he might have uh, regained it, who knows. Uh, so yeah, uh, I would like to thank uh, Vitor Vieira, uh, Philip Dennis, Richard Evans, uh, Vincent Dorschner, uh, Jack Powers, Luigi Colaiani, uh, Ashprek Rani and Keith Cunningham for a contribution to my channel, thank you a lot, I really appreciate it. As usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Uh, thank you all for watching and uh, I will see you soon. And uh, once again, uh, the winners of the giveaway are in the description below. Uh, thank you all.